Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I start by testifying that there is no deity to worship except Allah and that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is a slave servant and messenger and that Allah is along with our partners and that whosoever he guides won't be misguided by anyone else and whosoever he does not guide will not find guidance anywhere else. I ask that he protect my heart and my tongue and my hands as I address you and yours as you listen so that both of us might benefit and I seek his refuge from being deceived, from deceiving and being deceived, from oppressing and being oppressed and misleading and being misled. Um, I'll just go ahead and get straight to it. There are some misconceptions that exist in the black community with regards to men regarding the subjects of sex and colorism and uh, the one regarding sex and I'll start with and get that out of the way um, there are people who believe men and women like who believe that men have no resistance uh, to sexual temptation and no control once it's offered and that they have to take it every time and uh, that for the most part adult men are automatically freaks unless they're uh, old or maybe sick um, and that if it's not one of these then that they don't even like women in the first place which means they're just freaks for other men these are the ideas and uh, well, this yeah this is the idea and this has been pervasive throughout human history um, the idea of lady teachers sleeping with male students in high school and middle mostly high school is not something that nobody ever conceived of or imagined it's just that when that happened during my parents generation and even during my own generation everybody would have simply said well the boy's lucky and he can't complain and um, he would be stupid if he even told anybody or at least try to get her in trouble and that it would be considered a victimless crime on the part of the lady of course um, women would not be in a position of power and then accept a man in a position beneath them in any sort of power relationship at least that was the public perception so nobody would have believed the guy anyway but that was the idea that men have to accept whoever makes an advance and offers them some and that they can't turn away and say no and what people fail to realize is that in actuality every man is not out there just ready to give it up to every woman and that, believe it or not, um, if a man has a strong, weak, or medium libido, he would still like to know something about someone he's going to lay down with. A man has to practice and train for whatever he's going to be doing later on. So, if a man's going to be um, very loose with it and, and very active with women he doesn't know, the first few times are not going to be easy. He's going to have to train himself for that. If a man is going to be uh, on the other end of the spectrum and uh, he's going to be uh, very reserved and, and, uh, and very rarely lay down with anybody, then he would get used to that too. He, there's going to be a time where the, where the man must adjust and then at that point he's adjusted and he will carry on naturally with that particular arrangement. If a man's going to do it a few times a year only, he's going to adjust to that and then he'll get used to it. What people don't understand is that whatever happens to men first and consistently early on in their adulthood is going to be what they uh, is going to be that to which they become accustomed later and will carry on naturally left to themselves. The other thing that people have to understand is that men can have trust issues just like women. Women can have these walls put up and men are taught to see it as a challenge and go over these walls. Men and other women will say, you know what, she's got, she's got her defenses up, stick with it, keep trying, you'll conquer the wall. 
when men have their defenses up and they got walls up, even if it's for good reason, nobody understands that. Because as the man, he's supposed to be so free with it, giving it away. Women are socialized to overthink sex to the point that even when they get married, marriage has become sexless. Men are socialized to not even so much as sufficiently think about sex, but rather to underthink sex, making themselves readily available so much so that even though in all societies now, women outnumber adult women outnumber adult men and yet and still it is only the male genitalia and male sexuality that carries with it a negative value not just no value but a negative value the dingling is judged by how much that man owns maybe not the quality of it but whether or not it, it's even allowed to be used is judged by how much that man owns everybody looks and everybody agrees on one thing, that a homeless male has to be celibate. He must be. It, it, that needs to be the case all the time. Everybody agrees to that, men and women alike. We, we would take issue if we found out that a homeless man was regularly sleeping with someone because we would say, what about the babies? And who's doing him anyway? Survival sex? Oh no, that's only understood as something that homeless women might have to engage in in order to get resources to make it. Because it is understood that only women can trade sex for resources. What is the reason for this if women have a sexual appetite and men's sexual appetites are not uncontrollable and women outnumber men? Most of it is probably due to socialization. There are evolutionary and biological reasons for it. But hey, look, people have done things that make no evolutionary and biological sense before. So at the end of the day, the bottom line is that even when, you, it, even when sex does not necessarily have to mean children, the fact is that it is through socialization that men's genitalia carries with it a negative value. And I'm going to say that we need to start telling men exactly what we tell women. Start telling sons what we tell daughters. Overthink sex. Make sure that whatever standards you had to meet to have sex with a woman, she had to meet to have sex with you. If it's not the exact same standard, then another comparable standard in its place is fine because men and women are different. But make sure that both of you were equal to each other. Make sure that it's not men only going out there having to meet all the standards only because in all honesty in all honesty men and women are the prize but men are not taught that they're any kind of prize especially sexually speaking and some women say well men are the gatekeepers to commitment and emotional commitment and bonding that is very true but men don't no one's really telling men to withhold that to the same extent that people think they are. I mean, men are taught to not just emotionally bond with anybody, but no one's telling men don't ever emotionally bond, period, with any woman because women by nature are, are X, Y, and Z. This is something that experienced men have to tell inexperienced men for them to believe it. And this is something that men may have to see before they start to believe it. Young men don't have a problem uh, with emotionally bonding and having some sort of commitment. They got to learn why they shouldn't have it as time goes on. Women are taught out the gate to withhold sex. And even when they're taught out the gate to withhold it, there's always that minority of guys that, from whom women will not withhold it, even at young ages. And these are the ones who have the majority of babies. So, um, I wanted to go ahead and, and point out that these are misconceptions about men and sex. Now I'm going to point out the misconceptions about black men and colorism. Black men of all complexions and colorism. There's certain misconceptions that the community has. Even a lot of men believe these things. One of them is that colorism um, doesn't have a negative effect on black men. 
that light skin men don't really care that much and that dark skin men they're sought after right now so it, it works to their benefit and what I'm going to point out is that both of them get objectified and it is actually a slap in the face to, to the black men on both ends of the spectrum now colorism does affect black women and it's wrong but the community is already discussing that Ayanna Van Zant Ayanna Van Zant was talking about colorism and so was Oprah and they were talking about it from a woman's standpoint as if to say that men um, or they weren't addressing they didn't say that men were unaffected and they also did not address the effects that it has on black men I'm going to point out that although I was one of the lucky ones and I got to dodge a lot of the effects of um, colorism in both directions um, whether it was a backlash or original color whatever the case was I got to dodge a lot of it past the age of 18 but other men did not always get to dodge these things and it's not fair to them of both complexions of all complexions it is unfair to them that they also had to be stereotyped and yet they were told you're not allowed to talk about it don't even complain granted even men don't like the sound of men who always complain but to say that there is an issue and it's unfairly affecting people does not make one a complainer by definition but black men are taught not to say anything about it if you're a chocolate brother women are going after you anyway because you're perceived as more masculine than manly so you should shut up and just take you know take the punani being thrown at you and if you're a light skinned guy well you're sensitive and soft and weak and you only confirm that stereotype if you point out negative effects of colorism that's now one thing that is true is that for men we can joke about it more and understand it really is just jokes this is uh, much easier for us and so that's why I don't really have a problem with um, the all deaf digital crew of comedians putting out the videos light skin versus dark skin as long as they put a disclaimer in there saying look for one don't let your kids watch this until you talk to them about the fact that these are just jokes two these are just jokes and we do not endorse stereotypes especially within the black community that's the only thing I would change about those videos because the comedy value was still there they're funny and people need a laugh however I don't want to sit up here and tell you that other brothers have not been negatively affected on all sides of the, uh, the spectrum both ends of the spectrum the fact remains that they are that both of them are, are because of these stereotypes it is a real phenomena that these men are being objectified because of the stereotypes chocolate men are often somewhat sexually objectified by black and non-black women alike as if all they are is a penis all they are is testosterone can't get you nothing in life can't be responsible but you can you can feel like nobody you can feel safe from other people while you're with them and you are getting your healthy dose of testosterone in the man so um and he's going to hit the cervix walls and he's going to hit the cervix and and fill up the walls and all that you that's the stereotype so then that causes them to be objectified and it doesn't necessarily uh, they shouldn't be limited to that in terms of their expectations and of course you know with light-skinned men oh well okay well they're, they're soft and they're, they're, they're weak but they'll probably be a little bit more responsible in the non-romantic areas of life so they'll probably take better care of their finances and their credit and so what this does is this has led in our community to quite a few women saying I will either use um, I use either one to have whichever kind of baby I want whichever sort of baby I want I'll, I'll try to get from these men from whichever man some usually there are some younger sisters who are saying well if I'm going to have a, a daughter I want her to be light skinned with the so called pretty hair and the pretty eyes so they may try to get a man that fits that category hoping that she has a daughter and if they want sons then they certainly want the sons to have the, the West African dominant phenotype so then they will objectify that man to try to get that baby 
And in either case, they're then going to look for, um, in either case, when it comes to their financial needs, they're going to try to use one. And when it comes to their sexual needs, they're going to try to use the other. Each one of them being objectified by those who believe in stereotypes. And it ain't all black women that believe in them, obviously. But to a certain degree, we've all been affected. And, and I'm pointing this out because other men have been told not to complain about it. Sometimes they don't see it. They don't have to go through these things and I'm happy for those guys. But there are other guys who do, when you talk to them in private, they'll say, yeah, actually this perception does exist. I've been told this before. And I don't think they should have to go through it just like black women should not have to be stereotyped by men or by other women based on colorism and their, their individual phenotypes. No, it is not true that light-skinned men are soft. They're not easy to beat up on. I'm not walking around comparing genital sizes, but I seriously doubt that within the same race, you can use complexion to determine genital size. I got some serious doubts about it, but hey, you know what? If that's true or not, um, I'm not a witness. But no, light-skinned men are not more likely to be gay. That's not the case. No, uh, light-skinned men are not going to automatically have better credit. They may have more, more job opportunities, but let me address this. No, light-skinned men are not going to automatically be given more promotions at work on a consistent basis for an extended period of time. Now, is there light-skinned privilege on the job? There probably is. I've read reports that there is in hiring. But when you are black and you're light skin and you do not become disloyal to your people, you're not going to be promoted consistently and again and again and again and paid more. You see, like I've said, light skin privilege comes with a probation to it, a probationary condition. And if you don't accept that privilege and turn, use it to turn around and hold down and control the others, you will not be extended that privilege again. That's the truth of the matter. And no, no, dark-skinned men do not have less emotional capacity than light-skinned men. No, they're not less intelligent than light-skinned men. And this is not fair to say this about them and think this about them. And no, they're not always ready to fight more so than light-skinned men. This is not the case. And the fact is that these stereotypes are not believed consciously by most black women. The, many black women, the majority, do not consciously believe these stereotypes, but subconsciously, we don't know what percentage do and what percentage don't. Because it's hard to self-report from a subconscious angle. And studies haven't shown this yet. Not that I know of. So, we're going to have to stop stereotyping black men regarding sexuality and regarding complexion. In men... Black men are going to have to stop stereotyping black men based on gender and based on complexion. Not just consciously, but also subconsciously. That's where most of us get hit. I hope that this has been a benefit. Assalamu alaikum and thanks for listening.